Today we're going to talk about the carbon cycle and the goal of this video is to describe how carbon in various forms cycles through the atmosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, and biosphere. First, why is carbon important for life? Well, carbon is a major component of organic compounds like carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. In this image right here, this is glucose. This is a carbohydrate. Notice the C in it. That C stands for carbon. So this carbohydrate has carbon in it. Also, every one of these points where the lines connect represents a carbon atom as well. So there's actually um, several carbon atoms here. Also, look at this. This is an amino acid. And you will see that amino acids have a carbon in the middle, the central carbon, and also a carbon to the right as well. And amino acids are what make up proteins. So proteins are uh, made out of carbon as well. At the bottom here, this is a lipid. On the left, you have glycerol, and then you have these three fatty acids. Both the glycerol and the fatty acids have lots of carbons in them. And I say all that to show you that carbon is a major component of these organic compounds. Now, carbon is such a key ingredient that life on Earth is described as carbon-based life. Perhaps you've heard someone say before uh, this phrase, carbon-based life. They're talking about living things that are made, or at least a key ingredient of what they're made out of, is carbon. And living things can't make their own carbon. They have to get that carbon from somewhere else. You depend on carbon, but you can't make your own carbon out of nothing. You have to get that carbon from somewhere else. And this is going to lead into uh, how carbon cycles through the four global spheres, the atmosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere. But before we get to how it cycles through, I want to talk about what are the forms of carbon in each one of those spheres? Well, carbon is in the form of carbon dioxide, CO2, when it's in the atmosphere. Carbon is in the form of carbonic acid, or dissolved uh, carbon, when it is in the hydrosphere, like our oceans, for example. Uh, and carbonic acid is H2CO3. Notice there's a C in, in carbon dioxide, there's a C in carbonic acid. Carbon is in the form of coal, which is actually what this image on the right is. This is a picture of coal. Uh, it's in the form of coal and petroleum and calcium carbonate when it's in the geosphere. The geosphere uh, is what makes up the Earth's crust. So think of rocks. Um, so coal, you would be able to dig into a mountain or something like that and find coal. And carbon is made up. Uh, carbon is in the form of organic compounds when it's in the biosphere. And the organic compounds I have in mind there are the ones that we just discussed, like carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. Okay, so this tells you what form carbon is in when it's in each one of these four global spheres. Now, how exactly does the carbon cycle work? How is it that carbon changes form as it moves through these four spheres? Well, there's basically two main parts of the carbon cycle. There's carbon capture, and then there's carbon release. So it's an ongoing cycle of carbon being captured, then carbon being released, carbon being captured, carbon being released, over and over and over. So let's focus on carbon capture first. What happens during carbon capture? Well, during carbon capture, photosynthesis uh, happens, and this is where producers like plants and algae take in uh, CO2. So they get their CO2 from the atmosphere. They're going to take it in, and they use that CO2 to build carbohydrates like glucose, C6H1206. Next, 
there's consumption. This is where the carbohydrates that the producers made get passed from those producers to consumers. And both the producers and the consumers at this point, they make up the biosphere. They are living things. So the carbohydrates get passed from producers to consumers when the consumers eat them. Next, both the producers and the consumers decompose. This is decomposition. They die. And when they die, they decompose and the carbon that's in their body tissues go into the soil. And last thing we'll mention here for carbon capture is fossil fuel formation. So any remains of the producers or consumers will get buried under the Earth's surface. And once it's under the Earth's surface, there's high temperatures there once it gets deep enough and there's high pressure there. And that high temperature and that high pressure, those conditions convert carbon into fossil fuels like coal, for example, and oil and natural gas. So this is how carbon gets captured. These steps, photosynthesis, consumption, decomposition, and fossil fuel formation. Now, how is it that carbon then gets released? Well, one way is combustion. Combustion is when fossil fuels are burned. So this is a key role that humans play. When humans burn fossil fuels, carbon dioxide gets released back into the atmosphere. There's also geological activity for it. This doesn't make up a lot of carbon release, but it does make up a portion of it. Um, when volcanoes, for example, when volcanoes erupt, they release gases into the atmosphere. And one of those gases is carbon dioxide. So notice with both combustion due to human activity and also geological activity, uh, carbon dioxide is getting released back into the atmosphere. There's also cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is a part of carbon release because plants and animals release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere when they perform cellular respiration. One of the outputs or the products of cellular respiration is carbon dioxide and it goes back into the atmosphere. Last process that I'll mention here that plays a role in carbon release is evaporation. So um, the oceans have carbon in them and when, uh, and not just oceans, but it can be lakes and streams and other bodies of water. But when these bodies of water re release uh, the dissolved carbon dioxide in them uh, due to temperature rising, evaporation happens, and that's going to return uh, carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So there's, these are four ways that carbon can be released back into the atmosphere. So that shows you how the carbon cycle works. The two main parts are carbon capture and carbon release, and there were some specific processes at work in both carbon capture and carbon release, the main ones that we want to focus on in connection with this broader unit, this broader topic, is the role that photosynthesis and cellular respiration play in the carbon cycle. Photosynthesis helps capture the carbon and cellular respiration helps release the carbon.